Hello, Leiden. 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 Welcome to our studio. Hi, thank you. So, uh, why don't we go through um, a little introduction from each of you, and then we can continue our conversation. Yeah, so I'm originally from Italy, but mm-hmm. I moved here four years ago almost, after moving around. So, yeah. um, I lived in London, I lived in Ethiopia, so I've always been a bit of a, you know, fly moving around the country to country. Uh, but now, yeah, I've found kind of a home here in Leiden, so I've decided to stay. Do you feel mm-hmm. settled? Yes, for the first time in a while, yes. Oh, that's great, good for you, Leiden. <laughs> what about you, Helen? Um, yeah, I was born in Tehran, and um, I have been here over 20, 22 years. And I have been living in Leiden over 20 years, so I love it here, and my parents emigrated, and me and my sister just came with them. When someone asks you about, um, Helen, where are you from? Do you say Iran or do you say Netherlands? Well, I would like to think that I'm a mix. And hopefully I got the positive aspects of both cultures. But I've been longer here than there. So it's a mix. But home is the Netherlands, to be honest. Yeah. As you know, we have a little um, custom in our show. We usually ask our guests to bring little or big, you know, items that kind of have a value for them. Uh, Why don't we start from you, Martina? What did you bring us today? Yeah, so I brought this ring. Um, This was gifted to me by my parents on the first Christmas I was abroad. So for me, it's special because it was my first Christmas, you know, flying back, being back home after, you know, being a student far away. Um, And it's just a reminder for me of, you know, home like my parents and just good memories about every time I come back I know that I'm gonna have them there on my little you know group so yeah I try to carry with me as much as I can as well it's a beautiful ring yeah and as they say if you cannot visit your country you wear it on your finger exactly I just made it up but (laughs) it's a beautiful ring thanks for sharing what about you Helen what did you bring us I wrote a picture it's a photo of me and my sister. Oh, nice. And the special person is my sister here. And she's You like, look alike. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And she is uh, like the best friend I could ever wish to have. And as a child, I was a super social uh, kid. And I was alone for five years before she came into mm-hmm. the world. And I was crying my eyes out, you know, begging my parents, please, I need, I need a sibling. <laughs> And, um, yeah, and I mean, we are so different, but um, she's so strong, she's so wise, and she's always there for me. If if I'm stuck or if I'm happy, she's one of the first persons I would like to share the message with her, and she has had a huge influence in my life, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would like to share. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing your sister with us. <laughs> nice. And her name is Rihanna. Rihanna. Yeah. That's nice. Beautiful name. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, we made um, short videos about um, your life in Leiden. Um, Tahir has made it, uh, to be precise. Why don't we start watching it? Let's see, Martina, where did you take us? Good morning, Martina. Good morning. How, How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's a terrible weather outside. I know. It's awful. <laughs> so, working Summer. from home? Yep. Still working from home. Okay. Let's go yeah. inside Come in and close the door. That's a very nice, small, cozy place. Yeah, we love it. It feels very homey, very comfortable, and it's the perfect size as well, mostly in Leiden. So live alone? Um, I live with my boyfriend. Where is he? Oh, he's hiding in the other room. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's a really nice painting. Oh, thank you. Who painted it? Um, it's um, Harumov? I don't know how to pronounce oh, it. Oh, so it's yeah. Leiden. 
Uh, no, this is Venice actually. Ah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Ah, so you are Italian. You are promoting yes. your own. Oh, wow. A little piece of home. Where are you from in Italy? I'm um, from Milan. People ask you a lot that, are you a fashion designer? <sighs> yes. But also, do you make pasta? Do you make pizza? <laughs> I was waiting for that. Yeah, <laughs> I make some of those usually. <laughs> That's interesting. So how you came to Netherlands or Leiden, what brought you here? Yeah, so I came here to do my master's. Um, I just finished my bachelor's in London and I had a friend living here. And he was like, why don't you just apply and try it out? I was like, okay. And he made it sound so fun and that's how I landed here. So from London to Leiden, that yeah. must be a huge contrast. Yeah, but a nice one coming from a very big, hectic city to a place where you can walk everywhere. You take a bike 10 minutes and your places. I just love feeling close to everything. So what do you do apart from your daily work routine? Mm -hmm. um, I love to play games on the computer. Um, I love to read. I read a lot. Um, and also I love to cross stitch when I have some time and uh, when things open up also to travel. So hopefully doing that soon. Ah, okay. So uh, what kind of computer games you can strategy or uh, Candy Crush or? <laughs> Candy Crush. Um, I do a mix. So I like strategy, but also, um, you know, first person shooters, like basic Call of Duty. So just a little bit of everything. You haven't tried your hands on that famous PUBG game? Um, no, I, <laughs> no, I haven't yet. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Otherwise I was going to say, oh, oh no. And I can see uh, you were talking about books. Yeah. Among the books, there is a man. Yes. What's his name? Uh, Nicholas. And he's also Italian? Uh, he's French. And that's family? Mm -hmm. Um, that's my boyfriend's family and, and that's my family, yeah. Your mom, dad and brother. My brother, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And this is something really, wow. You like to listen to records? Yes, I can see yeah, it. Yeah, we record have the player. record player yeah. under the fan. <laughs> oh, there's Amy Winehouse as well. Yes. Interesting. Oh, wow. Back to black. You love Amy Winehouse? Yeah, I love their music. I mean, I was young when it came out and I remember listening to Rehab like nonstop when it first came out. So where do you go mostly in Leiden if you have to dine out or just like spend some quality time? Um, I like to go to restaurants. Um, I think one of my favorites is an Italian restaurant, of course. Which one? Uh, Fratelli. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I like to go in the bars as well by the New Verein, so like Dahl or Einstein or one of those places, you know, when there is a spot in the sun. Yeah, Tahir uh, was uh, disappointed not to see your boyfriend. He had yeah. to settle with the picture of Venice. Yeah, I've asked him, I was like, I have work, I have work. He was like, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Leideners like calling their city, ah, it's uh, just like uh, Venice of the Netherlands. Do you think Leiden is anything like Venice? Are they alike or are they different? Mm -hmm. I think they're quite different. I think Venice is still very touristy. It's more like Amsterdam, you know, always chaotic, full of people. But Leiden, even when it's crowded, it's not too bad. Um, I think the only thing they have in common is, yeah, the canals and the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is funny. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh... Because of the canals, they think it is like Venice. Hmm. Yeah, it's not, I guess. Well, thank you for uh, hosting us at your home. Uh, let's see, where did you take us, Helen? Good Helen, good morning. Hi. What an interesting day. Yesterday it was full grey. Today it's bright. Yes, it's kind of sunny. I hadn't expected it. So what's your Sunday plan? Um, Obviously, I had an appointment with you, and then we are going to Naturalis, the museum in Leiden. Yes. That's amazing. Yes, it's been renovated. Uh, yes, we visited recently. there. We yes. recorded a program there as well. Yeah. So, let's go inside. Come on in. That's yeah. a nice place to work, with canals and the boats coming. Yeah. Interesting. How did you end up in Leiden? Um, that's a very good question. I love Leiden and. Um, we were, my sister and I, we were very young when my parents um, decided to, to move to another country, to emigrate and start a life somewhere else. 
And um, as soon as I got here, I had so many rumors about, <laughs> rumors, <laughs> good stories about Leiden. And I was very interested in seeing it. And when I came here, I saw the canals, I immediately fell in love. So I suggested to my parents, we should move to Leiden. And they did. They, we moved to Leiden. I have been living in Leiden over 20 years. Pure fridge. That's very interesting. And there is a man there. Who is he? And that's Louis, uh, my okay. boyfriend. He's at the moment he's jogging with, with a friend. He always does that on Sunday mornings. And yeah, this is kind of highlights of. Uh, and these are my family, my mom, my sister. And this uh, is your sister. Yes, that's my sister. That's my mom. I travel a lot, so. Yeah, from Japan to, I don't know, US. So what was the the best place you have traveled to so far? Like, the, I, you loved it. I get that question a lot. It's really hard to choose. Mongolia. Okay. Mongolia was amazing. So where did you go in Mongolia? Um, we went to the Gobi des uh, Desert. Yeah. And we stayed in, in uh, yurts, the Mongolian uh, tents. tents. And yeah, I loved it though because it was my first time being in a desert and I never realized that there were so many living creatures actually in, in the desert. And I am normally a little bit afraid of insects, but I kind of found my peace with them after a few days because we stayed there around three weeks. And you were talking about a map. So let's oh, have yeah. a look at the map. Yeah, let's go. So <clears throat> what's the story about it? So the story is that when COVID started, my boyfriend and I, Tobias and I, realized that we cannot do much. Mm -hmm. um, we love playing games with friends, um, you know, doing activities. And in the end, we came up with, let's go for hiking. We yeah. used to hike, but in a structural way. So we uploaded this map from the internet. This is 350 kilometers of hiking. And we started in the north and we have been hiking almost two thirds of the country. Um, whole route. Yeah. One of the best things I like about Dutch is they just sit on the street and eat. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, the thing is, I almost have every day my lunch if I'm not walking. Here. Lunch walk. I'm having my lunch here. So you <laughs> you got it right. So this passion for photography, where it comes from? Um, good question. Um, the part of um, my mom's family, the side of uh, uh, her family, they are, we have a lot of artists. So I remember two of my uncles. I was very like, I was like four or five years old and they were photographers next to doing other things. And my mom is an artist as well. So I think I was inspired by their work and I started pretty early. So do you print them or display them somewhere? I have them online on Instagram. Let me have a look. Is the light okay? This is last week we went to a wow. animal park. This I is suspect here. this is, the same this is my place. lunch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, um, you know, the, the map you saw. This is during yeah. one of the walks. Nice. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, nice braids. I was planning to have uh, braids myself today, inspired <laughs> by your hairstyle. <laughs> we didn't manage. Uh, a friend of mine once told me if I look into Leiden photos on, you know, on Google Images, all I can see are the canals. As a photographer, um, is there any spot that you think you know would best represent Leiden um, in terms of photography? I think your friend had it right because you have many options, like having the canals and the boats and mm. the, like a, like the historical canal houses. So you have many options there. But definitely you have parks, you have other streets that you can choose to, to take uh, pictures uh, from. And I think most of my, my photos from Leiden are also involved, uh, they're involving uh, canals somehow, but also the buildings. And that's also one of my, uh, the historical buildings, like the canal houses, but mm. not, um, not taking the canals into the picture, but just the houses, let's say. So, so yeah, you have a lot of options. Also, the, like the university buildings, those kind of areas, it's really... Uh, Martina, you also love traveling. Mm -hmm. And you already mentioned uh, a couple of countries that you have been. 
Um, when I'm traveling, I think I'm a spoiled traveler. Um, what I usually make sure that there is a shower wherever. That's my bare minimum everywhere I go. What is your bare minimum when you're traveling? A comfortable bed. I can live without showering. I've had. Mm. Um, in Ethiopia, some hotels are very old school, so you maybe get you know a hose with cold water, and that's mm. your shower. Um, but if I don't sleep a little bit, I'm going to be unbearable. So as long as there is, even if it's you know an air mattress that's fairly comfortable, I'm happy. I'm a happy person. <laughs> that's good to know. You have been in Mongolia, Helen. Yeah, I'm an and you stayed in, at the uh, yurt. Yes, you, you mentioned. Yeah. Um, what was it like? You know, not to have. Um, it's very all primitive. the city amenities. Yeah, so it's it's very primitive. Like like Mongolia, like India, it's the same story. If you move around, um, you just get back to to the basics, and I think that's the whole point. Mm. Next to visiting a new place and experiencing a new country, so um, you get to know yourself better, and you get to know your boundaries as well. So it was very primitive, like. Having a suitable toilet, I was happy with it, you know. Um, was it an Asian toilet, a hole on the ground? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because in the in the desert, they don't have options. Like, you cannot expect a Western yeah, style uh, toilet. <laughs> no, no. But some places they had showers, some places didn't. So I skipped. Uh, it, was, it was okay. But that's the whole experience. I think you get to know yourself also better. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I own the prize. What do you get out of the whole experience <laughs> rather than concentrating on little details like shower? <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> uh, Martina, you are uh, working um, on search uh, engine optimization field. Yes. Can you explain us um, what is it? Yeah, so pretty much, you know, when you search something on Google, um, the first things that appear are usually what people click on. Mm -hmm. So I make sure that when people search something about my company, so about recruitment, that the company is going to appear in the first positions. Uh, speaking of recruitment, I have lots of challenges uh, mm -hmm. or challenging topics about that. Yeah. Um, for example, if you are searching for an English speaking job, Mm -hmm. uh, in Amsterdam, let's say, and all of a sudden you get stuff from Breda or Hilze or, I don't know, Hilversum, somewhere else. Like, how do you optimize it? Do you optimize it for the companies or do you optimize it for the people who are actually searching it? I don't know. Uh, how does that happen? So say that I'm optimizing about searching uh, somebody looking for my role, mm -hmm. um, I would do it for the company with the thought in mind of what do people want to read when they search this right so i could write like seo specialist in london but if people are looking for amsterdam they're still also not going to click on it they're not going to read more about it so it's a mix of a combination of making sure that the right things appear and that people actually are looking for that as you mentioned if i'm looking for an english speaking job i won't click for like dutch customer service because i don't speak dutch you know yeah uh, would you say i mean um, it's kind of a debatable topic. Is it about mm -hmm. optimization or is it about marketing for the companies? I would say both. I mean, if you ask me the department I'm in, I'm mm -hmm. in marketing, yeah. right? But I always try to keep in mind also what the people want. And that's why now we're not just selling a brand, but we're also trying to talk about issues that people you know, are interested in and trying to help them um, recruit better because one thing is not just helping people looking for a job but also helping companies you know recruit better and do a better job themselves so they can actually you know make the right choices and not do interviews with what's your greatest strength what's your greatest weakness but actually things that you know matter and that can you know help them make the right choice let's hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, Helen you're into renewable energy I heard um, can you tell us a little bit about your um, job? Yeah, sure. I am an engineer in energy sector, mm -hmm. and so we are one of the major uh, contractors for um, big um, energy uh, companies. And um, in the past, it was mainly um, uh, oil and gas, you know, chemical, petrochemical. But since a few years, like since two years, I have had the opportunity to work on uh, renewable energy related projects mm -hmm. and I'm also happy we are happy to see that also the old like oil and gas companies are um, slowly but surely moving towards renewable uh, related uh, um, uh, 
projects. And also we have new clients um, and those clients, their, their main focus is only renewable. So we have also those kind of projects. So I work, I have been working on both. Yeah. Um, we see so many floods, you know, wildfires and tornadoes and, uh, you know, earth slides and a lot of disasters that are caused um, by the climate um, change. Um, do you think the the companies who are, you know, still uh, emitting energy from um, petrochemicals can see that, that the way, you know, they are um, kind of influencing um, the earth is not very sustainable for the future. Um, and do you think in the long run they would quit completely uh, the production or, you know, extraction of uh, petrochemicals and completely move towards the renewable energy. How do you see that? Mm, that that's a complex question. It's, it's, it's a long story, let's say, <laughs> but um, I understand why you're asking it. I think it's not just one company or even one nation to, to, to start moving, you know. It's, it's, it's the whole policy, the government, which, which they should subsidize the energy, they should initiate it, you know, and then the companies will be forced to do that because, like, the major companies have already a lab for already years that they have been experimenting what would be the effect, what would be the options, what are the scenarios, let's say, if mm. we completely move, shift, you know, as you said. Um, but it's the government, it's, it's, it's just the European uh, Union, it's, it's the whole world who, should, uh, world who should change policy. And then by subsidizing and supporting the companies and changing the cultures at schools, you know, on TV, so that people accept it, they, they all start to move towards renewable um, mm. uh, resources of, of the energy. And yes, the companies may get there, but it wouldn't be their own initiative if you can earn and make profit already the way you have been doing it for for years why quitting and there are some companies who have done it because they took the initiative they said no we want mm. to completely shift and that's very very inspiring but um, not all of them are doing that they are all looking into scenarios and they are uh, we can see already some some shifts yeah it's a very complex road um i guess especially knowing for example azerbaijan is I say eighty percent of the economy is based on the the oil mm. uh, business, and then if oil vanishes, then, then there is nothing else to mm. earn the money for the whole uh, country. Um, it is quite challenging, but then you know what we see is happening in the whole environment is actually real as well. You know, it's right in front of our eyes, mm. and you know, it should force the governments to make the uh, viable changes. Yes, um, Martina, you mentioned. Um, you are helping companies to uh, kind of bring in more diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. into the um, SEO field. How, how do you do that? It's a lot about being honest, being mm -hmm. honest about mistakes they might be doing and being, you know, uh, just opening up this topic that some brands and companies don't want to talk about because they're worried of maybe messed ups. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about opening the line of communication and being like, okay, how are you doing this? How are you actually being as inclusive? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, <clears throat> sorry, there are some biases that we don't even know we have, you know? They, you might look at something and think, oh, this is like this and not realize it's a stereotype or it's something you shouldn't be thinking. And so we make sure that they're aware that this is happening because yes. if you're aware of that, then you can already start to make the first step towards change. Even if it's a little one, you know, just not say one word or not looking, you know, at people's photos when you're looking at resumes to not, you know, be biased if you see a person of color or, you know, a white person, because unfortunately, that still does happen nowadays. So it's all about that communication and, um, yeah. Well, transparency is, yeah. yeah. Um, Helen, you're originally from Iran, mm -hmm. um, but you grew up, majority of your life has been in the Netherlands, a uh, liberal Western country. Yeah. And then when you go, go back to Iran, um, as a Western child, so to speak, um, are there any shocking contradictions for you? Like, what are your observations like? Well, I would say at home, among family and friends, you don't really see those um, paradoxes mm -hmm. because you're in a protective environment. 
But if you want to live there, if you want to study there, you want to work there, then of course the, the, there is a, everybody has this parallel life next to their home mm -hmm. life, let's say. Um, the, the safe environment at home with friends and family, which is totally protected. And if you have the means, um, um, you can have a very lovely, lovely home. Like you can, you can live a nice life there. But then when you go outside, even when you want to study, then you get, um, you come across these, these regulations and the government um, rules that are not understandable. Like the, 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 the rights of men, women, simple rights are not equal. Mm. You know, so it's not from the people. Um, that's, that's, not the, that's not their point of view, but it's the government who would like to um, project it on the people and on the outside world. And um, that's why they have these products daily that they should deal with it. So, so even if, if you are 15, 16 years old, mm. and mm, if you have been lucky, your parents have, a, have the means, you don't really realize this until you really go into society and then you see that that protection environment is not there. And there are so many rules and uh, the rights are not equal. And um, so, yeah, then, then the life is very, very hard. Um, have you ever been stopped by religious police in the streets of Tehran? I haven't been there so, for so many years. And no, fortunately not. But I have heard scary stories, especially from young women. Mm -hmm. You know, if you Google girls in Tehran, they look so, like, modious. You know, they, they, they don't really cover their hair. They have something, but they look like... Um, it's a fashion show or something. So they are really fighting. It it may sound uh, small, but they are doing their best and they are not really listening. So those kind of girls get in touch with those kind of police um, yeah. regularly. I would say it must be hard for young girls, especially you know at the digital age. You know mm -hmm. uh, when. Um, you have a lot more chance of seeing more liberal way of living and then all of a sudden someone tells you, hey, you should cover your head a bit yeah. more. Yeah, and, they're you know, quite should... progressive. Yeah. 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 Um, well, go resilience <laughs> with those young girls. Um, so, uh, favorite lighteners. We have asked you to share your favorite lighteners with us. Um, who is your favorite lightener, Martina? Yeah, uh, my favorite Leidner, she's uh, Maya Van Dyke, and actually uh, she's a physiotherapist here, uh, but she's more than that. Um, when I first came here, I wasn't really working out. I had mm. a bad knee, so, you know, even being on a bike to go to a bar, I was like, no, I'm walking, I'm taking the bus, and she fixed my knee and she helped me but she would also you know build up my confidence or help me if I said oh I can't find good meat in light and she would tell me go to the butcher go do that so overall she was also somebody you could talk to and mm. then she taught me so much about Leiden and myself as well and I think she's doing such a great job also you know as a as a physiotherapist she's also amazing so yeah she's definitely my favorite Leidener. It's amazing. It's nice yeah. to have those uh, local connections who can advise you on yeah. uh, lots of you know exactly. directions. Absolutely. What about you, Helen? Who's your favorite Leidener? Uh, my favorite Leidener is Afrikada. You see her there in, in water. Mm -hmm. And she is the project manager of On the Water Life in, in Leiden, uh, in the canals. And I'm an animal lover, I'm a nature lover, so I really um, admire her work. And in the photo, in the picture, you can see that she's showing the, uh, she's showing shark, mm -hmm. the famous uh, crayfish um, of, of Leiden to the kids. And those kids are from summer school. Is that crayfish uh, local to Leiden? Yeah. So he's a real Leidener? Yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. It's quite famous. Yeah? <laughs> I didn't know. Well, good to know. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much for uh, having of a chat course. with us. Uh, it was really nice having you in the show. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's the end of another uh, episode of Hello Leiden. Next Saturday at the same time, 9 p.m., we are going to be on your screens. Please like us, follow us, and share your comments because they are extremely valuable. That's how we improve ourselves. And if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and you have a story to share with us, just like Martina and Helen did today, 
please email us at helloleiden at slotestad.nl. Have a good evening. Take care. Hello Leiden. 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 Hello Leiden